All righty. Uh, so my name is Jackie Cole with Veritable Good. Uh, I am one of the lead consultants for the community engagement for the Stockton Boulevard plan. And I will be guiding us through this process this evening. We have a lot of information and materials to cover. I'm sure that there are going to be a ton of questions. Um, there will be a Q&A section or a portion of the meeting um, at the end, uh, but please feel free to populate them in the chat as well. And before we get started, I wanted to do a land acknowledgement, uh, compliments of the Sacramento Native American Health Center. So the history of Sacramento, of the Sacramento area and the people, its rich heritage, culture, and tradition. This area was and still is the tribal land of the Nisenan people. Sacramento was a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived throughout the Central Valley and the foothills for generations and were the original stewards of this land. We would like to acknowledge the Southern Maidu people to the North, the Valley and the Plains Miwok peoples to the South of the American River. And we would also like to honor the Patwin Wintu peoples of the West of the Sacramento River. We acknowledge that we are standing on the tribal lands of Sacramento's indigenous people. So why do we do land acknowledgements? Today, we recognize that change can only occur in the context of truthfulness, transparency, and reconciliation around systems that have oppressed and excluded indigenous peoples. We believe that education can shift historically oppressive practices to build a more inclusive and socially conscious community and society. One of the steps in this process includes asking our partners, supporters, and allies to include an Indigenous Peoples Land Acknowledgement at every opportunity. This statement recognizes that Sacramento is the ancestral home of the Nisenan, Maidu, Miwok, and Miwok peoples, who are the Indigenous peoples of this land and have lived here since time immemorial. What is the purpose of a land acknowledgement? A land is off a land acknowledgement is a formal statement, a public recognition of the indigenous peoples who have, dis, who have been dispossessed and displaced from their ancestral homelands and territories due to a variety of colonial and historical reasons. This statement acknowledges that an organization, a city, a park, or any other structure was built and operates on indigenous people's ancestral homelands. Why are land acknowledgements important? Land acknowledgements are not about placing blame. These statements are the first steps towards building a more inclusive future where we eliminate the ongoing erasure of Indigenous people's voices, lives, and history. Land acknowledgements can be an entry point and pathway for education. Our land acknowledgement statement may be your first experience hearing about the Indigenous peoples in the area, which provides the opportunity to seed the path for learning and for the respect to blossom and to grow. Uh, so thanks again to our, our friends over at the Sacramento Native American Health Center for uh, providing that guiding statement. And we would like to recommend that anybody else who is hosting meetings or times take the consideration to acknowledge the lands that they're, that they're on as well. All right, we have so much to get through. Two hours is an insane amount of time to try to you know put all of this into, but we're gonna do the best that we can. It's my job to try to keep us on task. Uh, we're going to hear from a spoken word artist from the area. We're going to have some interactive exercises for you. We're going to hear from your council members. And I want to give a big shout out to Tracy, our Zoom specialist, uh, for all of the technical support. And if you're having any issues, Tracy's going to be the person who can help you out. Um, so just some quick tech-related things. Because we are doing this in a breakout session, uh, everybody is going to have the opportunity to participate. We would like to ask that you please mute yourselves if you're not speaking so that we don't hear any feedback or, you know, we don't hear the, the dogs or, or the children or any of the other background noise. If you're on the phone, that's going to be a star six. Um, and if you have a question or you want to make a contribution and you don't want to put it into the chat, please raise your hand. And I've got some folks that will be helping me uh, make our way through the list so that we make sure that we get an opportunity to hear from everybody. And uh, went, once you are called on, please, you know, remind us of who you are before you, you speak so that we, we know who it is that we're listening to. And then just, again, please make sure that you're using that, that the tech support. Um, as a agreement for this space, we know that there is a lot going on that we're trying to bring together. 
Uh, but we want to make sure that everybody understands that all ideas and points of view have value. So please operate with, uh, with respect and, and integrity. Uh, this is, you know, a new approach to what we're doing. And so we do want to encourage you to think innovatively and so we fully welcome new ideas. We're trying to figure out how to solve problems and to have, and to build actionable steps, not just a plan, uh, to make sure that we're able to get the work done. And we want to make sure that everybody's being honest and fair and candid as possible. You know, we're, we're having very honest conversations about some pretty socially complex issues that we're trying to address. I will do my best, as I said before, to honor time, although I'm looking now and we're already behind, uh, story of my life. <laughs> but please have patience as we are creatively working with each other through this virtual space. And as always, we invite humor and goodwill. You know, we're here to, to do the really important work, but also to make sure that we're having a good time. So thank you so much. All right, so brief agenda. So we're gonna hear from the council member Garrett. He's gonna open us up with some statements, but once we actually dig into the exercises, what we're going to be doing is uh, a review of the history and culture of Stockton Boulevard. And then we're gonna dig into some visioning and start figuring out what type of types of investments that we wanna see. We've done a lot of work so far to try to aggregate work that's already been done so we're not being redundant. So we're gonna try to cover that as well. And then we'll close it out and talk about some next steps and answer your questions. And without further ado, I would like to welcome council member Eric Guerra to provide us with our opening comments. Great, thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, and I love how you, uh, you know, hit that last name, uh, you know, right on. And I always say, if you can't pronounce the R's, can't roll the R's, Eric Guerra, then Yogi, if you think Yogi Berra, Eric Guerra, you know, that's the, the best way to do it. But thank you, Jackie. That was great to do that. Uh, first of all, I, I want to I thank everyone for being here. It's actually very exciting that we're at this point, even though it's virtually and not in person. Uh, looking just through all the participant lists, it just shows the richness and the diaspora and diversity of what is Stockton Boulevard and how much it, 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 it is because of its people and can be because of our opportunity. I want to first start off by thanking, um, you know, uh, uh, when I first got involved in, in running for office and as a Back then, just a, it was just a neighbor going to Alonso's for some pozole on the weekends and uh, and making sure that I got, you know, something and thinking about what the, bull, you know, our boulevard, like it's a, it's a place where we live, eat, play, work, you know, and um, and so for me, it wasn't, uh, what, you know, one of the, the folks I want to credit early on here today uh, is uh, Stephanie Francis. I know she's on here today because we got, when we got to talking about what are the things we want to see, how can we change this? Uh, Boulevard. And uh, another person I want to thank also, Frank Louis. I think he's on here today, but, you know, back then he was um, uh, running Louis' restaurant and always would bring delicious morsels to the Tahoe Park Neighborhood Association meetings and uh, supported many efforts. And, you know, thinking about, you know, how can we really energize and, and do actionable steps to change the boulevard and not just plan because there have been so many plans and planning and planning. And so what I want to focus on today is something that Jackie brought up. These are ways to make actionable steps to make change. Uh, two years ago, uh, we uh, made the budget authorization to start this process and get moving. Um, and um, because of that, I want to uh, also thank, um, uh, oh, sorry, it's my phone here. Dismiss, there we go. Uh, I want to thank Council Member Jay Chenier because when we started talking about how can we work together as council members, we also realized something bigger. It's not just Stockton Boulevard that is having these challenges. It's throughout the entire city. You look at uh, Fruit Ridge, you have Franklin Boulevard. If you look at the areas like Del Paso Boulevard, uh, these are all commercial corridors in Northgate Boulevard that are struggling the same way. Well, Stockton Boulevard, this is our test subject. And we are counting on everyone here today's participation to be able to help us find a, create a new innovative way to revitalize all our commercial corridors. We may be the guinea pigs, but I think we're the ones leading here the way. So I'll end with that by saying, we encourage everyone to participate. The breakout session is intended for people to, to put make this a ground up plan that with actionable steps. And already we have approved $31.5 million for housing that we can use for the commercial corridors. Uh, Council member Jay Chenier has been working at the statewide level to look at projects like Green Means Go to focus and get the state 
to prioritize commercial corridors like Stockton Boulevard. All exciting to say, thank you very much. I won't take up the full five minutes because we're behind. So I'll just put my contact information here in the chat box. Uh, excited to hear what everyone has to say and uh, how to participate. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank also all our city staff, Liz, Koise, Chern, Tracy, for putting this together and, um, uh, and many of our other people who are here today from our city departments. With that, Jackie, I appreciate the time. Um, go Sacramento, go Stockton Boulevard. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, let us dig in. Tracy. Beautiful. All right, so this is your engagement team. These are the folks who have been working to pull all of this together and to figure out how we can best incorporate the community as a part of this process. Myself, Jackie Cole with Veritable Good, Kim Williams with the Building Healthy Communities, which I'm sure everybody knows, uh, Alicia Brown with Walk Sacramento, Anna Co Okafor, I'm so sorry, Ann. <laughs> Elizabeth Boyd with the City of Sacramento, uh, recent addition, Brandon McCord, also with the City of Sacramento, Chelsea Payne is our uh, lead consultant for the project with Ascent, uh, along with Heidi Jen Kwong, who is literally just keeping us all together. Uh, Alan Folks uh, with Ascent, Christina Fabla, and Juan Reynoso. So these are your, this is your team. So what we were trying to do that was a little bit different with this project was um, figuring out how we could have resident participation from the get. So, you know, we understand that typically when community engagement is produced, that it's sort of, you know, it, it's thought of and it's baked in before we actually get started. Um, so we wanted to alleviate that by actually bringing in our community residents from the beginning. So um, these, this is a list of the residents who have been helping us plan and pull all these things together and to figure out how we're gonna move forward and what the implementation um, aspects are gonna be. Okay, so now what we wanna do is figure out who we've got in the audience. So if you've got your phone, um, please go ahead and take it out. You've got two options. You can either uh, go ahead and visit this link, which should be in the chat, um, put it in there. It's gonna redirect you to the exercise that we're gonna be doing. If you want to go ahead and text, um, text Stockton Boulevard 205 to 22333. Do not click on the link. Um, what you'll be able to do is to just operate directly from your phone. So what you see on the screen, you can just go ahead and respond to via text message. All right, so first up, we wanna figure out uh, where in Sacramento do folks actually live? So if you take a moment, and get into the Poll Everywhere app, we'll be able to see in live time where folks are participating from. Uh, the information, Peggy, is at the top. So you can go to Poll Everywhere, or excuse me, pollev.com backslash Stockton Boulevard 205, or you can just send a text message to Stockton Boulevard 205 uh, to 22333, and then you'll be able to go ahead and just respond directly from your, your phone. Awesome. This looks about right. Always a healthy level of representation from, from Tahoe Park. There are folks from Oak Park as well. And we'll have a few questions, so Go ahead and make sure that you get into the app and we'll give this just a, another moment. Nice. Curious about the folks who don't live in Sacramento, if you wouldn't mind putting in the chat where it is that you're coming from. Root Ridge Manor, love it. All right. And 
and for the folks who are coming from other neighborhoods in Sacramento as well, go ahead and put what other areas that you're, you're coming from. Thanks, Joel. Abraham. Oh yeah, Elk Grove. You guys are probably using Stockton Boulevard as your, your commute. Arden Arcade. Okay, nice. All right, so it looks like we have Tahoe Park in the house, Oak Park, happy to see, Lawrence Park in Fruit Ridge Manor, and Colonial Heights, beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so now we wanna know what is your relationship with Stockton Boulevard? So are you a resident? Are you a homeowner? Are you a renter? Are you, you have a business that's located off or near Stockton Boulevard? Are you a developer? You work on Stockton Boulevard? Visit Stockton Boulevard? I spend a lot of time visiting on Stockton Boulevard. I am forever at the Colonial Heights Library for community meetings, usually visiting Kim over at the Building Healthy Communities for Rich Community Collaborative, a little happy day spa, church's chicken. Lots of visitors and homeowners, nice, very nice. It could be homeowners on Stockton Boulevard or, or if you're just in the neighborhood. A lot of homeowners and some renters. Hey, Adrian. All right, let's move on to the next question. How long have you lived or worked on or within a mile of Stockton Boulevard? So how long have you been connected to or visiting using Stockton Boulevard? One to five years, 15 plus. Yeah, there's a lot of generational families in the Stockton Boulevard area. I want to say that um, wasn't one of the first um, sites where communities of color were allowed to purchase homes. And if you were in an, an interracial marriage, it was one of the first places that people of color could purchase homes. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next slide. All right, don't lie. Generally, how old are you? We can't see this information. Nobody's gonna correct you on it. We don't want to, you know, what you what you hope you you look like or what you think you are, but how old are you? Nice. Glad that you're here, Ed. Lots of generational folks. Okay. Boomers, boomers, some millennials. Love to see it. Got to work on those under 18s. And let's move on to the last slide or the last question I want to say. How do you identify? And you don't have to uh, if you don't want to answer the question. But again, it's anonymous. We can't see it. Zillennials. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. And Stockton Boulevard is one of the most culturally diverse slices of Sacramento, I think in the region, to be perfectly honest. All right. And was that our last slide, Tracy? Beautiful. All right, so we've got a good mix of folks that are participating with us tonight and love to see it. We'll head back to the presentation. All right, so the Stockton Boulevard plan. Ultimately, the goal of what we're trying to do is to transform Stockton Boulevard. We understand that there's gonna be a lot of development. There are a lot of emerging trends and changes and opportunities that are coming up. And we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing is gonna to go towards building a thriving corridor. We wanna make sure that we're expanding opportunities for the residents who actually live here. 
and that we are supporting the cultures of existing residents and small businesses while we're accommodating the, the anticipated growth. All right, so this is the actual stretch that is included. It's a four and a half mile long stretch of the corridor from Alhambra to 65th Street. Next slide. And although the project is titled Stockton Boulevard, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do is to make plans that work for the surrounding communities. So although you know, we'll be focusing on the corridor, we are going to be including the 23 surrounding neighborhoods. And again, it's to make sure that existing residents and small businesses are able to benefit from whatever developments and invest investments happen in the future. Next slide. All right, so this is just getting a little bit more specific. Um, so visuals that folks can see, um, you know, as we are taking a look at the types of improvements and developments that are gonna be happening along the corridor, these are the main pockets that we'll be focusing our attention on and then including the surrounding neighborhoods. So you can see Central Oak Park, South Oak Park, Lemon Hill, Fruit Ridge, Talic. We wanna make sure that we've got a good cross section. And we asked for folks to um, participate on the resident planning team who reached the full span of, of that stretch along the corridor. Um, I don't think Aggie Square was specifically identified on there, but you know, that's a project. I know everybody has lots of feelings about it and there will be plenty of time to dig into that. Uh, but we included the Med Center since, you know, that's not a project that's been completed just yet. Next slide. All right, so here's the other thing. There is so much going on on Stockton Boulevard. Uh, when we were first getting involved in um, trying to figure out what projects and opportunities already existed, we were overwhelmed by the number of things that were already happening. And so ultimately what we would like to do, next slide, is to figure out how to bring all of these things together. So we want Stockton Boulevard plan to be sort of the umbrella that houses all of these things and develops action items for how these things can be connected. We want it to be the brain trust so that we don't have to require community residents and participants to participate in all of these things all over the place. Um, and I, there's nothing that can be said about that at the moment, but that's the goal that we're ultimately trying to accomplish. Next slide. All right, so as a process, uh, through a collaborative and inclusive planning process, the city and its partners will build a shared vision of the corridor as a great place for existing residents and small businesses, while also providing space for future growth. So we are at the community priorities and visioning section of this. So the activities that we're gonna engage in today, tonight, um, are going to touch on community priorities and visioning. We're gonna do some continued outreach um, with our uh, monolingual and multilingual communities as well. And then uh, after we have finished that first round of outreach, we're gonna start developing strategies and actions. And we have actually included on our team consultants to take a look at some of the um, economic feasibility so that we can figure out how we're going to pay for some of these things and how we can prioritize them by our ability to actually implement them. Next slide. Uh, so as I said, language access is definitely a priority. Uh, we understand that along Stockton Boulevard, we've got a lot of cultural enclaves and history. Um, so there is going to be a survey uh, that folks can fill out at the end of this lovely meeting and if you don't get the opportunity to it'll be posted up on the website and it'll be available in Hmong, um, at least one dialect of Chinese, Hmong, and Viet. Next slide. Now these are the general focus areas that we have been able to determine based on the information that we've been able to find so far in some of our initial conversations with community residents. We know that housing and anti-displacement is a huge issue. Um, and honestly, if we can't figure out how to keep our communities where they are, any of the development that we're doing isn't for them. So we wanna make sure that we're trying to figure out how to address um, housing and displacement before you know, it, it becomes 
even more of an issue and to make sure that we're including that in our decision-making processes for the future. Inclusive economic development, we know that workforce is going to be a huge thing coming up. And so we wanna take a look at the opportunities that we can introduce to include youth in this process to revitalize Stockton. Placemaking, arts and culture, as I said earlier, Stockton Boulevard has just got such a rich amount of history. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're preserving that wherever we can and highlighting and elevating and amplifying community voice. Uh, environment and public health, you know, environmental justice is my thing, that's my little house. So we're trying to make sure that you have got healthy air, that you've got healthy food options, that you have access to all of the public amenities and, you know, building an environment that you actually wanna be in. And then mobility and transportation, I don't think this will ever not be an issue, but we wanna figure out how to make Stockton Boulevard a place that's safe to walk and bike for all modes of, of transportation. Next slide. All right, so the end result is, you know, an action-oriented plan that will be reflective of community priorities. We really want to focus our attention on how we can improve the quality of life and economic opportunities for the folks who live along the corridor. Um, and we want to do that while also increasing community ownership and building local capacity to do that as well. Next slide. All right, so if you want some additional information, Elizabeth Boyd at the City of Sacramento is our project lead. Um, so you can reach out to her. You can sign up for her newsletter, which provides updates on the project as well here. And what we're going to do now is take a moment and hear a performance from our spoken word artist, Fong Tran. Fong, and Fong is from the Stockton neighborhood. He's a Sacramento native a spoken word poet. He's got his master's degrees degree from UC Davis in community development. He got his bachelor's degree in, from UC Berkeley in social welfare. And he is currently working at American River College, helping students uh, transfer to four-year institutions. And Fong, if you would like to unmute yourself, I will mute myself. Awesome. And thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fong. Uh, super just honored to be here. Thank you, Jackie, for inviting me. Thank you, Mary Ann, for referring my name. And so, um, yeah, I'm just going to do a piece that uh, I actually performed at uh, Create, which is a um, local organization that uh, encourages art and youth engagements uh, in the District 6 area. So, um, yeah, I... Uh, I hope you all enjoy this poem. It's really just a reflection of uh, my love for Sacramento. I uh, grew up here in Sac and, you know, Sac and Boulevard was basically where I grew up. Um, I grew up going to, you know, dim sum at King Palace and all my cousins were married at Happy Garden. So yeah, it's basically home. And uh, yeah, I just hope that uh, this poem could help inspire as you kind of discuss what Stockton is going to become and, you know, idea of community, the idea of home um, and uh, connection. So, uh, yeah, so this is Sacramento. If Sacramento was a woman, she would have been raised by a single mother, baby food fed off of some pho and steak tacos. She was in White House, White House polished like I-80 billboards made her out to be. Sacramento had a heavy cream brown sweet. She was mixed. She had a resting bee face with a side eye that can cut anybody. She would wear a leopard print hijab with hoop earrings and her favorite cultural food was fried chicken. She didn't get into fights for her. She got into fights for you. She was loyal. She was hot, like devastating dry 100 degree five day forecast hot, like risking major foot burns trying to walk out in some $3 rubber slippers from VinFat supermarket hot but she reminded you why you missed the water so much, like James R Rudder, community pools, American rivers. She reminded you you need to go work out, but she also reminded you you need to renew your three-year Costco membership to 24-hour fitness. And then that reminded you that you actually don't have a Costco card that you have to borrow your mother's. Um, so that reminded you, even though you're, you think you're a grown-ass man, 
you still have to be taken care of by your mom. Sacramento had a long string of bad relationships. Like there was this one dude called the Maloofs. They had a good run in 2002, almost got a ring, but Robert Horry from LA home wrecked them on home court. Maloof had the audacity to try to leave her to go to Anaheim. It sucked. There was a lot of back and forth, but it's cool now. They're going steady with this new guy. They got a stadium together in downtown, but they keep on making bad financial decisions with the DeMarcus Cousins, but it's cool. They'll figure it out. Growing years. But um, you realize that Sacramento never needed the success of Kings to feel like royalty. She had an unwavering love of self that has always been the trademark of her monarchy. She is the queen among politicians. Politicians that play their game of thrones, thinking that they run the city, but know that it's always been its people that keep the city running. When millionaire owners sell our sports teams and it wasn't met with devastation, rather just known all too well frustration because we've been through betrayal before, People of color have always known the lessons being grounded in home. We've learned the persistence well before we ever learned to quit. That's what you get when you grounded in home. Billionaire owners and politicians leave in bandwagon. Sacramento grew up learning how to fight, just work, never backing down from challenge. These politicians try to stake in claims on cities they don't even know, labeling, labeling us the city of farm to fork or the city of trees, planting seeds that they never grow. Sacramento is a city of proud immigrants. And just like an immigrant, know that our pride may be the strong silent type, but our resilience has always been unrelenting. We less talk, more bite. No need for the gift of gab when you all might. If you translated farm to fork to an immigrant, they probably cuss you out with a confused look and say like, well, duh, why is that anything special? We've been doing this stuff well before white people try to make it popular. My Sacramento stay ready. Knows the difference between McKinley Park and Oak Park, Eldorado Hills and the Heights, South Sacramento and Oak Grove. She tell you that is Calvin Boulevard. And that's where you can tell where everything is. She asked you, is it by the five or the by the 99? She know where all the hoods were by finding all the liquor stores and fast food joints. She didn't know exactly what gentrification was, but she knew how to question it. How is a place any better when everyone in it moves? People ask me all the time, what's there to do in SAC? And I wish I told them the truth more often. I say, you can run. Run into at least five people from high school at Walmart. You could drive. Drive down Stockton Boulevard and get a bowling book tea and a burrito all on the same block. You could sightsee. See into the eyes of your high school sweetheart. Instantly remember how you awkwardly learned to fall in love for the first time. While you puzzle piece the most sincere way to tell her, um, congratulations, I'm really happy for you. Sacramento is not a Disneyland, but dazzled herself with cement stars on Hollywood boulevards, show off with overpriced dance clubs and hista bars or a Capitol building. You see, there's a difference between a place that's designed for its tourists and more for its people. A place that's less about its glitz and glam and more for its heart. A place that's less of an attraction, and more of a home. Awesome. Thank you again. Really appreciate it, everybody. And uh, yeah, hope the conversation Yay! Went well. Hey, thank you so much, Juan. That was beautiful and perfect and spot on. I got goosebumps. I was like, no, you didn't. Thank you so much. I hope that you stick around, but also don't feel obligated. We would love to have you participate. All right. So um, to keep it moving, because again, we got a, a whole lot going on. Um, we're going to dig into this next section, which is about reflecting on the history and culture of Stockton Boulevard. And to do that, we have invited three of our RPT members to... Um, share their memories. But before I bring them on, we just wanted to, you know, make sure that folks have the appropriate context. As you heard during the opening, you know, we're acknowledging that the this is the ancestral homeland of the First Peoples. Um, but we also know that, you know, for decades, Stockton Boulevard has been really the regional center for our Black and Brown communities around 
food, art, culture, um, a little bit of everything. I remember taking the bus down to Flora Mall. I won't go there. Um, but yeah, on the southern end of Stockton Boulevard, you know, we've seen it flourish. The cultural district of the Vietnamese owned restaurants and businesses. We'll hear from uh, one of our RPT members who was able to participate in the designation of Little Saigon. Um, and who can forget, you know, Highway, Stockton Boulevard used to be Highway 99. Um, so we understand that the construction from Highway 99 was harmful for our black and brown neighborhoods and, you know, led to a level of white flight. There's just so much to unpack in Stockton Boulevard. So. You know, we're, we want to make sure that we're acknowledging the spaces that we're coming from before we start digging into where we want to go. Um, so with that, I am going to invite Michael Benjamin. Tracy, I did not confirm with you whether or not those, um, the images that we're including are in order, but I think Michael Benjamin's photos should be up first. Yes, they are. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, wow. Thank you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah. Thank you for having me, uh, first and foremost. Um, so my name is Michael Benjamin II, actually. And um, the picture you see to the left is Michael Benjamin the first, and you, you see Chan's Restaurant. Um, Chan's Restaurant was once my father's uh, Black-owned and operated theater. It had 60 seats, and um, he opened it in 1978. And uh, it served as a community meeting place for, for all the arts, pretty much. And so actually during that time, the boulevard uh, was, was, was pretty, you know, it was, it was a lot of people, you know, a lot of walk traffic back then. Next door to my father's theater was a, a liquor store called Anderson's Liquor, owned by African-American male, uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, across the street where Chase Bank is now, we had a convenience store called Springer's. We had Warner's Nightclub on the corner as well. So the, the corner really reflected um, uh, the strength in black business. And um, that's what I grew up on and around. I uh, attended Tahoe Elementary School, uh, then Cal Middle School, then Sacramento High School. So I've been around St the Stockton Boulevard corridor pretty much my whole life. Um, the theater closed in, I wanna say the mid, mid 80s and then reopened on Lawrence Drive um, across the street from uh, what used to be the Kmart, and uh, that theater was 120 seats. So I was born and raised on this boulevard. I've seen it. I've seen it, uh, you know, it's had its good times and its bad times as well. Um, my fear is with, with the development that uh, it, it, displacement will take place, not only of, of the individuals, but of the culture. We have to get away from, you know, being able to come in and develop, snatch down names of places where, you know, people who, who built the community um, were once at and just replacing the name with something new. And so Stockton Boulevard holds a, a, a deep, deep, deep place in my heart. That corner, especially Stockton Broadway, um, because it was just bustling, bustling, bustling with black business when I grew up. And, and that had a positive impact on myself and, and the surrounding uh, uh, people there. So, um, you know, in, in doing this work, I want to make sure that we, we are able to develop, but not displace. That's important. And, um, that's who I am and I love Stockton Boulevard and I'm determined to make sure that, you know, the people who, um, were able to create the infrastructure, stay relevant, have a voice and, you know, aren't removed from the place that they, uh, that they helped build. Stockton Boulevard is cool for certain reasons. Stockton Boulevard School, because there was people there like my father who made sure that the arts, right, and the culture and things like that stayed relevant. And um, we're determined to make sure that, you know, that does not disappear with new development. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now we're going to hear from Marianne. Hi everyone, so great to see you all and all my neighbors and community members and new friends I'm making being on the um, RBT team. And I'm really, I was really proud and excited to be asked to um, participate this evening. Um, I am, I live in Colonial Village 
And I do a lot of work in District 6. I'm also the community coordinator for an organization called Create District 6. And we celebrate and um, encourage at the artists and art in District 6, South Sacramento. And uh, that's how I got to know Fong Tran. And I, I was just so excited to, to see my friend and neighbor Fong Tran this, this evening. And thank you for reciting that awesome poem. And it's just such a reflection of what I love about Sacramento. And, you know, I haven't lived in South Sacramento very long. I've only lived in Sacramento for about 15 years, which compared to a lot of people I know in the Stockton Boulevard area, that's just like hardly nothing when people that like Michael that have lived here for generations. So I want to acknowledge that first off, but um, I've lived in, um, I'm in, uh, have deep roots. My family has deep roots in Northern California. So um, after living in Sacramento for a few years, I decided to buy a house and I found this cute little house in Colonial Village uh, neighborhood, which is on the east side of Stockton Boulevard, if you don't know. And I just, so I bought the house and I moved in and I just fell in love with Southeast Sacramento. Some of my first memories of Stockton Boulevard, as you can see this art piece, I just remember driving by this art piece. Stockton Boulevard um, is one, for me, in regards to art and culture, is one of the best kept secrets in Sacramento. That's one of the things I remember. I also have um, some other uh, memories of discovering murals on Stockton Boulevard and also um, installation art pieces, sculpture. Colonial Heights Library has a beautiful sculpture. So as an artist myself, I'm a visual artist. I was just struck by here's the Stockton Boulevard corridor that some people might just think of and what my first memories were of um, just some vacant buildings some vacant lots, traffic speeding back and forth, up and down. And all of a sudden, when you slow down and you, and I really started looking at Stockton Boulevard and noticing the people and the restaurants and the art, I was like, wow, this is the, the coolest, one of the coolest, um, what I like to call now the boulevard, one of the coolest areas in the city, just by taking a closer look. Um, and then I discovered this cool market, La Superior Mercado, where I buy uh, my ingredients for tamales, my Christmas tamales, and it's just a great store. That's another great memory I have on Stockton Boulevard. And then some of the Southern cooking, what they call soul food restaurants. So my grandmother, I have a grandmother that's from Mexico and another grandmother that grew up in um, and was born in Louisiana. So discovering that there's both those kind of foods in Stockton Boulevard was like, oh my goodness, I'm back home. <laughs> I didn't move very far from home. So those are some of my first memories, um, all within just a couple of miles of each other. And I also, um, one of my other great memories of Stockton Boulevard when I first moved there was driving past this place that had this incredible mural, this beautiful mural of Spanish dancers. And um, I was like, wow, that's a dance center, Bailes Folkloricos Dance Center. And it's IMBA. Also in that center, I discovered walking in one day is an incredible um, uh, uh, Afro-Caribbean dance company called Phoenix Drum and Dance. So um, those are some of my my memories first moving here and slowing down a little bit on Stockton Boulevard and really exploring it. And I've loved hearing some of the other stories that some of the longtime residents of uh, Stockton Boulevard uh, like to tell like Michael's stories and Stephanie Francis has great stories and Jermaine Gill has great stories because they've lived there a lot longer than me. So I'm learning a lot. But Stockton Boulevard is just uh, so full of um, incredible people, culture, art, and history that I'm proud to be on this team um, to help preserve that. It needs to be celebrated, recognized, preserved, encouraged, 
And so that's, that's what, what I wanted to say. And thank you for letting me share that this evening. Awesome. Thank you, Marianne. Beautiful. All right. And then last up, we have Mai Nguyen. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mai Nguyen, and I'm the executive director for CPAL, stands for Community Partners Advocates of Little Saigon. And I've been a community advocate since 2008 on, uh, in Little Saigon. So the most memorable part and such an honor to be a part of this community is Back in February 2nd of 2010, um, which was led by uh, our former council member, um, Kevin McCarty, also now as assembly member, Kevin McCarty, who led the project in the uh, designation of Little Saigon. And how that designation all came about, it was a community project, which includes um, a lot of the community organizations, such as VACOs. Um, we, I was very honored to be a part of the Little Saigon Committee at the time. And um, what we did was we wanted to learn more about how this designation is going to impact the business and the folks that are living there in, uh, in Stockton Boulevard. So we look at the project and we wanted to make sure that this is an, um, uh, an inclusive project where we give the opportunity uh, to this area. So what led the project was truly the recognitions of the immigrant minority business owners out there. As you know, late in the 1970s, there's a wave of Vietnamese American Im uh, Vietnamese immigrants migrating to the, the Sacramento area. And a lot of them uh, resides in South Sacramento. So some of them started to set up businesses out there on, uh, in the corridor. And in the early 1980s, we have more folks coming in, um, remember back in you know the SF supermarket right off 65th, Hung Lang, uh, Hung Lang um, sandwiches, and then we had Vin Fat. We have all of these supermarkets coming in. So for 30 years uh, plus, back in 2010, um, these folks, these immigrant business owners contribute to the area, really um, contributing economically and, and building the area. So the idea came up to be let's 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 recognize that accomplishment. So that was how Little Saigon all started. We knock on doors. We wanted to include everyone into this project. We wanted to have them see the opportunity, what the name will bring to the area. So the, the designation um, took place from the city on February 2nd and from the county side February 4th. It was unanimously voted by the city council member. It was a historical night. There was probably 400 plus people attended. Um, so when that happens, we um, did a celebration, um, we included everyone, it really built the momentum and the enthusiasm of people coming in to dine, we really want to um, let everyone know that Little Saigon is for everyone. So the project truly brought together the unity of the community. It brought together a lot of more uh, economic growth. We, we wanted to really uh, boost up the local economy out here and it brought in traffic. And, and from the, the, the cultural aspect of the, um, the area, you know, it's very diverse. We have pho, is, we're very well known, as everyone know, food brings people together and where else would it be the best is Little Saigon. We have so much variety of different food um, in that area. So to kind of shorten it up, it's pretty much the Little Saigon we hope is just, you know, the mainly the recognition. It brought excitement, it brought the momentum, and, and the most important is the opportunities. And so I wanted to thank Jackie and, and Council Member Guerra and uh, the city folks to allow us to be a part of this RPT team so that we can kind of share and highlight that and bridge along with everything else, the, the historical of, of Stockton Boulevard itself, um, the, the, his, the history of it back, you know, 30, 40, 100 years ago, how we can kind of embrace and bring all this together as one uh, big community, uh, uh, city of Sacramento. So yes, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mai. All right, so now what we wanna do is we want to hear from all of you about what your memories are, what some of your favorite places are of Stockton Boulevard. 
So we're going to send you into breakouts. We're gonna give you about 20 minutes to dig in and then we're gonna have you come back. There will be one facilitator who is going to um, report out uh, a really quick 30 second report out when we get back. Um, but yeah, we're gonna send you guys out. We wanna hear all about your memories. Let's do it. Tracy, take it away. All right. Who would like to report out for, well, actually, I was a part of group one. Um, second. Uh, so we spent quite a bit of time digging into introductions, but we talked a little bit about um, the, the small businesses that were on Stockton Boulevard that, that we enjoyed. Um, so, you know, Stephanie was talking about being able to, you know, travel to Long Island to get a chocolate malt for her and her son. Uh, we talked a little bit about development that's coming up uh, with mutual housing on Stockton to try to provide a little bit more affordable housing. Um, but yeah, we spent our time just kind of getting to know each other. Um, who would like to report out for group number two? So that would be me um, for group number two. And um, it was a great group of folks and we, I mean, definitely always food comes up. So we have, um, you know, the the fish market, which is the flower fish market, which um, was, I think it's one of the oldest um, black owned businesses is what um, someone said, um, eating at Pho and Do on Sunday mornings, um, going to the Florin Mall, um, going to Alonzo's off of Fruit Ridge in Stockton. And then of course, there's always the like interactions with people. So, um, we had talked about this at the resident planning team, but As Asada brought up the the, I, the old log, which is the log was a place where people would hang out and talk stories. And, you know, um, it's been replaced with commercial space, but really great memories of seeing a bunch of people hanging out there um, and informally. Nice, awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, group number three. That was us. Um, so we also had a really great conversation about some uh, memories associated with certain places on Stockton. So um, the Del Prado restaurant um, and going to uh, going to eat there um, after church on Sundays. Um, also Ella's uh, to buy dresses. Um, and then of, uh, of course talking about Little Saigon and uh, its um, value to the community. Um, having it there kind of making Stockton feel, or Sacramento uh, feel like home. Um, one other thing that came up uh, to similar to um, the other groups, it sounds like was just all of the variety of restaurants and mom and pop uh, stores. Um, and so making sure to, uh, to keep those um, as well as all of the um, great architecture and existing buildings and maintaining those facades too. Awesome. Thank you. Group number three. All right. Four? Are we on four? That was three. three. I think. Alicia, were you three? Oh, yeah, you I'm were four. I was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Group number four. We had a really wonderful conversation. Of course, we talked about all of the great food, the pho, the Vietnamese sandwiches, church's chicken. We talked talked about um, touch of class came up several times, um, the 51 bus ride, and shared the experiences and memories on that, um, Yankee hardware. What really struck me was um, the language of community, that uh, we might all speak different languages, come from different backgrounds, but that we all speak the language of community. Um, and we all reside in the same place and we, that, that we really need to focus on that. Beautiful. Okay, group number five. Hi, so we spent a lot of time talking about the old state fairgrounds and how much fun they had, you know, when they grew up and remember visiting there, but even after it closed, they remember all the things that were left behind. So they mentioned how there was a roller skating ring and then later a racetrack. Uh, other things that they mentioned was that 
Yankee hardware and how it kind of felt like a community that where they, a place where they could go and get help and they knew them and you know they love that and they also mentioned uh, the Food Rich Driving Theater and they remembered to go into the theater and all the other theaters uh, along Stockton as well and uh, Happy Garden they have a lot of fun memories of going to all kinds of different events there so not just events but also the food and uh, also St. Peter's Catholic School, they remember how it served as a community meeting place for many people and how excited they are to see it still there. So, and of course we talked about a lot, a lot of food. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, group number six. Yeah, hi. Um, we had a good discussion. And, and a lot of that was, I think, not so much about individual places, but people stepping back, kind of looking at sort of the bigger picture of the boulevard. And uh, one person said that this was about uh, the connective tissue and how Stockton runs through the city. And it connects a lot of different places. And it, it's a very important artery that, that shouldn't be forgotten. And it shouldn't be a highway either. It should be a very well, sort of walkable kind of place and uh, the notion of diversity up and down the whole entire corridor, the, the mixture of culture um, and traditions. You know, a lot of people mentioned that, which I thought was very important. Uh, the library was mentioned as a very important uh, sort of place that, that one of the persons goes to and, and values quite a lot. And um, a little bit about the cafes and the food, but by and large, I think, Everybody thought that this was this, uh, this bigger place that had to have some uh, distinctive resonance to it, you know, and that, as we think about its special qualities going, going forward. Beautiful. Thank you. And where are we on seven, group number seven? Yep, that's us. So for our group, we had two main themes that uh, emerged. The first one was similar to a lot of the other breakout rooms. The food, the food, the food. Um, there's great food across the corridor from uh, in the northern area, in the northern part of Stockton Boulevard, there's a lot of great small cafes and nooks, breakfast nooks, um, even some that are no longer there, like uh, Mighty Kong Cafe, um, and some that are there today, like Boon Boon Thai. Um, and then in, um, the other big th theme that emerged for us is the beautiful architecture um, more in the central part of the corridor. I think some of the people on the chat have um, called out the beautiful Art Deco architecture and how um, that area of the corridor uh, is very accessible for pedestrians. Um, it's easy to walk along. There's lots of trees and shade and it's a comfortable experience for people to visit. Beautiful. And that takes us to group number Eight. Yes. Okay. So uh, I thought it was good one, but okay. So yeah, I was wondering how uh, how much was going to be left. You all named a lot of things we talked about, but we um, had a great discussion. Talked about touch of class, but that before it was touch of class, it was Francinetti's winery, um, and that um, talked about the fairgrounds, Colonial Theater. Uh, we couldn't talk about the boulevard without talking about Luigi's Pizza. Uh, okay. and, um, talked about the architecture, specifically the gas station that's on around Stockton to 9th and how it still has some of those um, classic uh, gas station looks that you would see like a lot of times in like the old movies and how to preserve some of that um, so that you don't lose some of those pieces. And then talked about some of the signage along the boulevard, some of the old signs and um, being able to preserve those and, and being reused, um, even if other places are developed, that those signs and things can still stay there and so that we can remember them. Uh, so we talked about that. And um, the, the, there's the campaign for bring back the trolley, trolley car. So that came up as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, I think that that's all of the groups. So um, now we are going to shift into the reflect, no, connecting. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy, affecting, there we go. All right, so now we wanna start talking about what it's gonna look like for us to visualize and actually bring some of these ideas and these concepts to fruition. So 
we've spent a little bit of time thinking about the way that we feel about Stockton Boulevard and the memories that we have. Now we want to start talking about what we want the future of Stockton Boulevard to actually look like. Next slide. All right, so we're going to put you back into your groups. And for this exercise, um, these were some of the ideas and the concepts that came up when we had this conversation initially with our resident plan uh, planning team. So, you know, we've heard over and over again about the arts and culture and trying to make Stockton Boulevard into a destination. Uh, one of my favorites was the facade of the trolley, <laughs> that uh, the streetcar, the trolley, you know, uh, in its original days was, you know, sort of a centerpiece of the city and certainly along Stockton Boulevard. And we don't necessarily have the space to do that now, but we would like to provide um, that level of service, but let's make it an electric vehicle and let's put the facade of a trolley on it so that we can bring that characteristic back to the neighborhood. So again, these were just some of the ideas that, uh, that we developed and we wanna ask all of you to join us in continuing to expand on what we want um, those things to look like. Next slide. All right, so we're gonna push you back onto your groups again. And I don't know if we're gonna do the full 25 minutes because we are <laughs> we're running short on time, but this is really to start digging into what is your vision for Stockton Boulevard. When you think about Stockton Boulevard, when you close your eyes and you take a look, like what is it that a su successful corridor actually looks like? What do you see? You know, what's, what's the experience that we wanna provide and what types of investments um, do we wanna see? So we're gonna push you back out into your, your breakout groups so that you guys can talk about that and we'll see you in a few minutes. All righty, so we're gonna try to do a quick check-in with the groups. I'm sorry, group number one, I needed a little break. I had to go to the bathroom, but I hope that you guys all made it into the other group successfully and had productive conversations. Um, let's go ahead and start with group number one, or two, group two. <laughs> it, would it be possible to share our screen um, with the notes that we took? Because I think that would be really cool Is if that is a possibility. Of yes, doing, um, should be. Zoomed in on, uh, awesome, thank you. So I just feel like um, we were taking notes on, you know, some three different main topics, like the community aspect and having more, more family friendly um, activities, green spaces, places for people to gather, um, you know, things that really um, make it also safer and you feel like you can bring your family out at night or you can go out at night and not feel like you're in danger. Um, and then just the idea of, you know, the, the roadway and making it feel like you can walk, you can bike, you can hang out like that, um, you know, mentioned that there is the work that's been going on for a while, but really seeing that play out with having a streetscape and that feels, you know, more walkable, more safe and has transportation on it. Um, lots of trees, trees were mentioned quite a bit and in so many ways that they could slow down traffic, make it more, tra more attractive, make it cooler so you're not like heating up. And then um, a few things with urban design and just looking at like, how do we bring in those buildings closer to the street and make it so that there's more activities going on in the empty lots and using um, places and, and that we sort of have this, hey, you've, you've arrived um, sort of feel. So thanks. Very nice. Group number three. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen too. Uh... Oh, it's like I can't, oh, there we go. Um, so for us, we talked a lot about um, also a lot of walkability, trying to make it more um, family friendly and uh, feel a little bit more active on the street and also slow people down so that they um, can really appreciate the um, restaurants and businesses on Stockton. Um, so everything that kind of goes with that, um, making sure to have a tree canopy and some green space uh, to make it feel comfortable. Um, also uh, some nice uh, trash receptacles and recycling receptacles um, and thinking about are there ways to even incorporate uh, art as part of that. Um, and then 
Uh, we talked about some other uh, events or activities um, that could happen on Stockton. So more live music uh, and concerts, um, having a, a night market um, with uh, kind of like food stalls, um, also uh, uh, maybe some games and, and kind of having that kind of almost festival flair. Um, having lots of rest areas and benches and then on um, vacant lots thinking about can those be urban farms or maybe parks um, uh, and also could we have some more mixed use buildings uh, with uh, people living on top of businesses um, and again have a little bit more of that walkability aspect. Um, yeah those were the main things for us. Beautiful. Group four. All right. Tracy, do you want to just share the board or someone share the board for all the groups we can, as we go? Um, we also talked about a lot of the same things around a walkable, bikeable, um, making it a safe place, family friendly. Also about creating an, a nightlife, places to go. Um, apparently 11 o'clock is not nightlife, but going till midnight or one o'clock talked about a cultural center featuring African-American businesses and arts and having an infusion of youth, youth-led activities and in the cultural center, um, arts, math, STEM, jobs training. Um, we talked about the, the new construction coming with Aggie Square, a new development and wanting a, a, having a pipeline of, of youth into the local construction jobs. Um, and we talked about the importance of you know, cleaning up Stockton Boulevard, um, but also you know, needing to make sure that people have a place to live. Um, and we talked about a lot of other things, but um, in the interest of time, I think that that high level sums it up. Beautiful. Group number five. Hi. Um, so we also spent a lot of time talking about walkability and, and how to, you know, activate Stockton Boulevard, whether it's if we have, you know, more places to go and grab a coffee or have more light nightlife, maybe having galleries and um, maybe the implementation of a trolley that could help people to get to places and not have to bring their cars. Um, other things that they mentioned was uh, branding. Uh, and having Stockton Boulevard become a destination. And also, we also talk about more parks and um, green spaces and just gathering places, just a place for people to be able to go in the evenings and in the summer and in the time. Um, and also no ultra modern buildings. Um, they express that they don't want their architecture to feel like Natomas, they would like for it to have a more historic uh, feel to it. Awesome, thank you. Group number six. Okay, that's, uh, that's our group. And uh, it was a very good sort of discussion. Visioning is a little more fun to talk about. Uh, we let off with safety first also, you know, that there was a real need to sort of think about this from the view of the pedestrian. And, uh, you know, maybe there's road diets, maybe there's, there's other things that contribute towards thinking pedestrian first when you're laying out the, the circulation improvements. So that was important. That was also coupled with people talking about lighting, to have better lighting out of the board, and also the infrastructure and trying to underground some utilities and make sure things are um, aligned for ultimately for future development uh, to happen. So a lot about sort of the, uh, the street, you know, right away, if you will, and how that gets reconfigured. Uh, on the, in terms of uh, new businesses, people talked about um, places that are catered to locals, not necessarily to people coming from out of town. So, you know, people were mentioning things like Gunther's, you know, the ice cream place, you know, can there be more places like that? Uh, on the entertainment side, can there be places that cater to uh, families? You know, historically, there might have been uh, places that catered 
you know, went late into the night for the younger folks, but now there's a demand for perhaps places for families. Uh, we had talked about um, the need for housing of all types, not just high-end housing, not just affordable housing, but the whole spectrum and adding a lot more housing into the corridor. Um, a lot of people mentioned the idea of community gardens, vegetable gardens, just as this was mentioned before, how important that is would be to grow the food that we would be uh, eating in some of those restaurants. And um, dog park was mentioned and also a community center was mentioned and perhaps having that somewhere up by where Luigi's Pizza is. So a lot of good ideas. Awesome, thank you. All right, group number seven. So we have a lot of the same themes as other groups. Uh, there's a desire to make the corridor more pedestrian friendly and walkable and more comfortable to go to restaurants and businesses along the corridor. Um, th we had a long discussion about supporting Little Saigon and the business community there and helping to build up Little Saigon as a destination, whether through that's marketing, branding, um, facade treatments and a lot of different ideas came along with a, a food festival. Um, uh, you can see some of these food ideas here. We also um, talk a lot about housing and they're just as the chat is blowing up, there's a need for more affordable housing. And, and in, for those, some of those smaller vacant parcels that are along the corridor, using them as pocket parks, community gardens, adding more trees, again, in order to support um, the corridor and making them more friendly and inviting. Beautiful. And last but not least, Group 8. Uh, so a lot that we talked about it has already been shared. Just a few things I'll hit that, um, that we talked about uh, around safety. There was a lot of talk around safety and walkability, but um, more crosswalks specifically along the boulevard so fleet folks can cross the streets safely. Um, talked about traffic control um, and using, bringing in more trees and a median running through the middle um, to control traffic and um, spaces for young people, uh, making sure that there was more um, spaces for young people to have uh, positive recreational activities. Uh, and there was um, an idea around using art um, along the entire boulevard to express the cultural uh, cultural aspects of the communities, but also the personalities of the individual communities that you kind of cross going down the boulevard, but using art as a way to express that and show that as well. Um, and then having that outdoor space uh, for cultural celebrations and the community to be able to come together and gather so that there was a, a central location for that, including maybe even a space for health and wellness that's locally owned. Um, and then maybe restaurants with outdoor seating. Beautiful. Awesome. I love this. It sounds like everybody had some really good productive conversations. Now, um, I want to be very mindful of time. So um, I'm going to introduce Council Member Shanir to give us some closing reflections. Um, I know that we are quintessentially at time, and I, again, want to be respectful of that for, you know, for everybody. But we are going to stick around and answer questions. So we'll be available even after the closing remarks um, from Council Member Shanir. But without further ado, Jay? Thanks, Jackie. Uh, appreciate it. And I, I very much realize I'm the last thing standing between uh, this and everyone finishing off their evening. So I, I just really want to say thank you. Um, I think I heard a lot of great ideas. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you had 80 to 90 people here tonight or on the Zoom. Um, that shows real engagement and people care deeply about their community. There's a lot that we have going on. I know uh, Council Member Guerra spoke a little bit about some of the things, including the monies we put into affordable housing last week into a trust fund, and hopefully a good chunk of that will be used on Stockton Boulevard. Uh, I'm excited about the $6 million that we put into youth programming as well, and hopefully that will also touch the boulevard. But um, again, just want to say thank you to, to Jackie, did a great job, Elizabeth, uh, all the folks um, who are working on this plan. Uh, this is really true community engagement and we'll look forward to 
next steps. So thank you. Beautiful. All right, so just in terms of next steps, and again, I wanna let folks go. If you don't have the time and you need to get back to your families, like absolutely do that. If you wanna stick around, we're gonna open it up for um, a conversation to answer your questions about the project. But just to let you know, um, in terms of next steps for our engagement, we're going to be setting up a series of, um, of outreach meetings for our monolingual and multilingual communities specifically to make sure that they get to participate in this discussion as well. Um, there is a report that we've been working on that has helped us identify um, some emerging trends that we're taking a look at to identify some of the needs and the opportunities that are coming up. And just so you know, you know, like we're mindful of the fact that inclusive economic development and transportation and climate adaptation and Aggie Square and air monitoring and uh, climate adaptation are all things that we need to take into consideration. And so those are all of the things that we're going to continue to um, include as a part of this discussion moving forward. And I will pause right there and um, go ahead and raise your hands. Um, and then we'll select on people to open it up for, for conversation and, and for questions. And thank awesome. you, anybody who has to leave, like thank you so much for, for participating and hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, and if you don't see the raised hand function, you can also use the green check mark that says yes to indicate that you would like to speak. Uh, awesome. But I do see we have a raised hand. Can we take the, the PowerPoint down pretty sure. please? Awesome. All right, and I will need some help calling on folks. Sure. Uh, Tessa is the one who has her hand raised currently. Beautiful. Um, I'm, I missed the first hour, so I apologize if you already covered this. Um, I've only been in Oak Park for about a year and a half. And I'm just wondering if there are ways where people who want to really support equitable community development can like keep working, like not just attending webinars. I love the webinars. I appreciate that there's opportunities to give input, but like do community outreach, like canvas our neighborhood about opportunities or way to get ways to get people involved. Like, are there other opportunities like that that um, people can tap into? Absolutely. And so if you register for this event, you know, obviously we want to follow up with everybody who participated and we'll be sharing out other opportunities to stay involved and engaged in this process and this project specifically. And like I said earlier, we, what we want to do is have this operate as sort of the larger umbrella for a lot of the things that are going on. I mean, it makes your brain explode when you think about the number of things that are happening on Stockton Boulevard. And so we want to provide some guidance in terms of where folks can plug in and be a part of that conversation. Um, I hope that that was, that was helpful. Did I answer your question? I think so. And then a lot of people are private chatting me to join the Oak Park Neighborhood yeah, Association. Association. Yep. Definitely. Um, a lot of the participants for our resident planning team are also um, members of the neighborhood associations and other community partners. Uh, but that's an excellent way to get active and to participate and to jump into all the things. Thank you. And again, the idea is by the time that we're finished with this project, what we'll have is an action plan. So it's not just here are some things that need to get done. We're working with the, we're working with a consultant that's going to help us identify where we can find the funding, how long some of these things are going to take so that we can prioritize what we can do in the short term, what we can do in the medium term, and what we can do in the long term. So we want to provide lots of opportunity for like all of this work to get done. Yeah, Elizabeth? Um, and I wanted to mention that, you know, we'll have a document, but we're already starting to work. I mean, I think that folks have seen um, with both council members have talked about um, getting funding for affordable housing. You know, there's a bunch of different affordable housing projects. I posted in, um, 
answer to Adrian Rain, he, he was asking some questions about like posting the PowerPoint and what all the different things that are going on. So we actually put it together on a map. So there's different layers on this map and you can just click through and see some major projects, including ones that we know are coming, but they're not quite to the city yet. We try to put those on the map too of different housing developments um, and other things. And then also, you know, all the various different initiatives like the um, building healthy communities, where is that address? The, um, there's the air quality monitoring that's in the southern end of the area. So there's a lot of stuff up there um, and we're going to do our best to work with the existing groups that are working on these things. Like, you know, there are some groups that are very interested in working on vacant land and what can we do at the city to help support that and work with them and not just create new, we're not creating new efforts. Um, there are going to be some things that we do new because there's some things that you guys have talked about that we don't have a program for that yet or we don't have an initiative, but there's certain things that there's already groups. And so now we're going to do our best to connect you guys into those existing conversations and make sure that we as a city are supporting those as best we can. Beautiful. Tracy, question. Um, Jackie, if I could, how would I find out who my association is? Uh, I live in the 71st estate, Estates area by the Wellco grocery store. Kim <laughs> might have a better idea than I would. Kim. Oh, where's the location again? Sorry. It's called 71st Estates off of um, um, Fruit Ridge, Stockton by the Wellco grocery store. It's not, Sounds it could be Lawrence Park. No, it's no, Glenn Lawrence Park. That's Lawrence Glenn Park. Elder. It's the Glen Elder area. Oh, mm. uh, yeah, what's that? Sorry, there's an A in there, but it's the Glen Elder. Okay. Oh, it's it's Avondale. City. Avondale. Oh, Glen that, yeah, that would be the Avondale side then. Yeah. Yeah, it's Avondale then. Yeah. Over by George Sims. And I think that both of those uh, neighborhood association presidents are not in the meeting anymore. But you can get their contact information, Yolanda, on um, the city website. Um, for uh, neighborhood associations, and it's Jermaine Gill and Stephanie Francis. If it's thank you so much, Ridge Manor uh, is Stephanie Francis. Thank and you so much, and it's and on Faye the city Kennedy. website. Faye Kennedy is with the Southeast Village yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, Faye Kennedy. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Next question. Don't see any raised hands, but uh, if people have a question, please, please raise your hand. Don't be shy. <laughs> or just unmute yourself. <laughs> also, like, I appreciate that it's eight o'clock and you guys have given us two hours of your time and you have lots of things that you need to do and we hit you with a whole lot of information. And you guys were champs. I can't believe that we are this close to time. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't see any raised hands in the participants yeah. list. Uh, I just have one question. Is that okay? I will yeah. there be a summary report about sort of the results of the questionnaires that we did earlier, or is that? Yes, we can do okay. that. I was just wondering if it'll be available. Thank you. And I just yeah. want to mention along with that, um, we're going to keep the, so we have a questionnaire on the website for anyone that wasn't able to make it tonight. The English version is already up there. We're going to be doing, um, you know, multi-languages and then having those um, languages available. And with everything um, until the end of March, I believe is what we're planning on. So all the different languages will be up on the website questionnaires. So we probably won't summarize just this meeting, but we'll summarize all of them together. So we get really good cross section of the community. Uh, we do have a question for the next, the next approximate next meeting of this group or for this plan. Right. Um, so we're still working that out. We're working with our resident planning team to build out the rest of our community engagement. I would expect it within the next, I want to say a few weeks to four to two to four weeks. 
Within a couple of months, we're going to start having topic-based discussions as we start to identify strategies and piece together the action plan. So um, yeah, look for a meeting to happen a, a couple months from now. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, I just want to say if you have any questions and you don't feel comfortable in muting, you can always submit it in the chat. We will uh, be recording that and can address that in the future, hopefully. Anything else? We don't. All right, you guys are beautiful rock stars. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay! All right. And